in continuation of the previous lecture of soil bacteria in this lecture we are going to see what are the dominant group of autotrophic bacteria present in the soil system here the autotroph refers to those that can able to fix their own carbon requirement this population constitutes a small numbers but play some major roles say for example the first two groups that is nitrosomonas and nitrobacter they are all playing role there in the nitrogen cycle mainly in the conversion of ammonia to nitrite that is by nitrosomonas and nitrobacter is involved in converting nitrite to nitrate the next three groups of organisms are mainly involved there in the sulfur cycling that is acidic thiobacillus and acidic thiobacillus peroxidans they are the two groups of sulfur bacteria that are involved in sulfur cycle the acidic thiobacillus peroxidans in addition to sulfur oxidation they also oxidize iron that is ferrous iron is converted into ferric the last one is a thiobacillus denitrificans which is mainly associated there with the denitrification process taking place there in the soil system apart from this group of autotrophic bacteria cyanobacteria is also one of the important autotrophic bacteria present there mainly in the marshlands however we are going to look at the cyanobacteria related points separately there in the lecture 3 next we look at the important group of heterotrophic soil bacteria that is that feed on the already available carbon sources there in the soil system the first one is actinobacteria that consists of large filamentous cells and they are the antibiotic producers of the soil system thus they are all gram positive aerobic and their function is mainly the biodegradation in the soil in addition they produce geosmin geosmin refers to a distinct earthy flavor and aroma like substance which is responsible for the earthy taste of the beets they are commonly referred as a contributor of the scent in the soil that is called as a petrichor thus the smell of rain is sometimes referred as a petrichor it is mainly due to certain soil dwelling bacteria such as actinomyces and certain cyanobacteria contribute to the production of a geosmin which gives a earthy aroma when they produce certain spores so the rain disturb the compounds that is the geosmin compounds present in the soil that leads to the formation of the earthy odor human noses can able to detect at less than of 5 parts per trillion thus the presence of small percentage of geosmin in the soil can be easily sensed by humans some more interesting facts about geosmin are given here so this is the structure of the geosmin so it is the one which gives a fresh spring smell in other words geosmin is a greek name meaning earthy odor it is mainly formed due to the presence of streptomyces like organisms or different streptomyces present in the soil and this geosmin is responsible for a poor taste and which is responsible for the half tasting of the water as well as fishes in the environment cyanobacteria also produces as i already referred it also produces geosmin during their death and this geosmin can be absorbed by the bottom feeding organisms the next important organism is clostridium in the heterotrophic group of organism present in the soil they are gram positive anaerobic and spore forming organisms they play a major role in a fermentative metabolism in the carbon cycle they found to contain certain special enzyme complex which is called as a cellulosome so it is an extracellular enzyme complex commonly present in anaerobically degrading bacteria such as a clostridium this complex consists of a lot of cellulosomal enzymes which are capable of degrading the plant cell walls the cellulosomes are multi enzyme extracellular complexes that are commonly associated with the cell surface and they are involved in the degradation of the cellulose molecules the next organism is methylomonas 
which is also again a aerobic and gram negative organism which is capable of oxidizing methane as well as trichloroethylene so this is a mechanism by which they can able to co-metabolize two substrates that is methane as well as trichloroethylene with the help of a special enzyme called as a methane monooxygenase and this type of metabolism is referred as a co-metabolism the next important heterotrophic organism present there in the soil system is alkaligens eutrophus which is a gram negative aerobic bacteria which is capable of degrading 2,4-D which is a common herbicide applied there in the soil the next one is a common organism which is well known for you that is the rhizobium which is a gram negative aerobic that is capable of fixing nitrogen symbiotically when they are associated with the legume roots next is frankia frankia is again a gram positive group of organism and aerobic in nature they are specifically referred as a actinorhiza that is they basically belongs to actinobacteria so frankia is the actinobacteria which is found associated there in the root surface as it is an actinobacteria it is referred as a actinorhiza so they are also involved there in fixing nitrogen symbiotically with non legume plants especially cashirna savukan solvanga tamil la with that plant you can able to find a lot of frankia nodules the next bacteria is agrobacterium which is a again a gram negative bacteria aerobic bacteria which is commonly referred as a plant pathogen it can able to cause galls in the plant system next we look at into the various groups of bacteria that have been dominating there in the soil system the presence of this bacteria are mainly detected through their 6ns rrna genes that have been extracted from the dna that have been present in the soil so here the list has been prepared in such a way the first column says about the phylum to which the organism belong the second one what is the average percentage or range in which they have been present and the third one what are their subgroups that have been present in the soil and what is their significance there in the soil or what is the role they play there in the soil system so if you look at the first important group of a soil bacteria is a proteobacteria that have been well represented by a lot of different cultured isolates there are different classes of proteobacteria have been existing say it belongs to alpha proteobacteria beta proteobacteria gamma proteobacteria and delta proteobacteria however the alpha proteobacteria is a dominant one which constitutes about 9 percentage there in the soil system they are commonly involved there in the nitrogen fixation they may be endophytes with the plant system some can be preying on the other bacteria that is predator in nature they play a role there in the nitrogen cycle by mainly oxidizing the nitrate the next important group is a beta proteobacteria they are also again nitrogen fixers oxidizing ammonia and also involved in the denitrification process and they can also able to oxidize the methane present in the soil system third group is a gamma proteobacteria as well as delta proteobacteria they are also an important group that constitutes to about 3 percentage in an average in the soil system so this proteobacteria that are all gram negative cell wall containing bacteria which consists of the four classes what i have discussed so far are important bacteria present in the soil system the next one is a acidobacteria acidobacteria is a autochthonous group of a bacteria that is a bacteria which is constantly found associated there with the soil system especially the members of subdivision 1 are readily cultured here culturing and unculturing meaning some bacteria can be easily cultured there in the petri plate whereas some bacteria won't be growing in the petri plate you need to study those bacteria only with the help of their sequences that is by their genome sequence or 6ns rr the next group is actinomyces recently they are referred as a actinobacteria the other names includes the thread bacteria so this is again a common bacteria gram positive organism that have been distributed there in the soil system in the genome surveys they have conducted it comprises of 14 percentage that is apart from proteobacteria and acidobacteria this group of bacteria is an important bacteria they are all gram positive in nature and filamentous and pleomorphic that is exhibiting 
different shapes there in the soil system. Three subgroups are very important. One is Actinobacteridae, the next one is Acidomicrobidae and third one belongs to Rubrobacteridae. We are going to see in detail about Actinobacteria in a separate lecture. The next important group is the Viricomicrobia that constitutes 13 percentage. It also found to possess five major classes whereas the class 2 that is Spartobacteria is most commonly present in the soil. They are all aerobic and heterotrophic groups of organisms. Some groups of Viricomicrobia were being found to associated with the nematode as a symbionts. The next group is the Bacteroidetes which constitutes 11 percent there in the soil system that is comprising of Cytophaga, Bacteroides as well as flower bacterium groups. They are all gram negative bacteria which consists of at least four different subgroups. They are commonly present there in the soil. The important subgroups includes the Spingobacteria, Flavobacteria and Cytophaga. Bacteriality is the one which is uncommon. They are not commonly present in the soil but rarely they are found associated with certain symbiotes. Apart from these groups, other groups are minor organism in the terms of their availability there in the soil system. Say for example, Chlorofluxes is consisting only a 2 percentage or within a range of 0.6 to 3. Then Planktomyces, even Fermicutes which is a phylum known for you well that has been represented by the Bacillus. Bacillus you all used to think that is a common organism in the soil as you see in your petri plates often. However, Fermicutes constitutes only 0.5 percentage of the population there in the soil system within a range of 0 to 4 percentage alone. Another important group that have been present there in the soil system is Cyanobacteria which belongs to a low abundance group of phyla which is present in the soil system especially in the marshy environments. They play an important role there in the photosynthesis. They also fix nitrogen. They are unicellular, colonial or filamentous in appearance. We are going to see again a separate lecture about cyanobacteria later. Other groups that have been present includes Nitrospira, Deinococcus thermus, Chlorobi, Fibrobacters, OP11, PM7 and there is a lot of candidate phyla that have been present there in the soil system. Here the term candidate phyla refers to the organism that cannot be cultured in your petri plate but that can be studied only through 16 rRNA sequences or through their genome sequences. The last part of this lecture is functions of roles of bacteria in soil. The roles they perform in the soil influences the growth of the plant system there. The different roles that performs includes biochemical transformation of various nutrients there in the soil that is the first and foremost. There comes the decomposition of cellulose and other carbohydrates especially during the operation of the carbon cycle. The next one is they produce different kinds of phytohormone. This phytohormone can able to influence the growth of the plant system and thereby increase the crop productivity. The next important role they play there in the soil system is ammonification that is production of ammonia from proteins and the second one is a nitrification. Ammonia is converted into nitrites and then to nitrates by a group of bacteria that includes nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. They play an important role there in the nitrogen cycling. Apart from that, the other two points that is denitrification and biological nitrogen fixation are also related to the microbial process that have been operating there in the nitrogen cycling. Biological nitrogen fixation is a process by which nitrogen present in the atmosphere is converted into ammonia with the help of an enzyme called nitrogenase. The organisms involved in this nitrogen fixation pathway are referred as diazotrops. Only bacteria found to have the capability to fix nitrogen. None of the eukaryotes were able to fix nitrogen. The next one is production of growth modulating enzymes. So these are all certain enzymes that can able to influence the growth. The one is ACC deaminase and the next one is production of different kinds of volatile compounds such as ammonia that can able to influence the growth of the plant system. The next one is induced systemic resistance. It's a kind of resistance that have been created there in the plant system mainly due to the presence of certain bacteria like Pseudomonas fluorescens. And the final point is related to sulfur and iron cycling. 
that is oxidation and reduction are two important alternative process that have been taking place there during the sulfur and iron cycle operation.